Hi everybody, welcome to today's video where we're going to cover aircraft and hopefully this won't get too long but it is quite a complex topic. It's been requested a few times so I really wanted to at least touch on some of the basics if I can. As always please do subscribe to the channel if you find this video helpful and check out the other videos. Any feedback is also greatly appreciated because all of this tells me that you are enjoying the videos, that you're wanting to interact with them and it's worthwhile me continuing to make more. So without further ado, let's start having a look at the aircraft themselves because it's better to understand what they are and what they do before we start talking about tactics in the game map. So first let's talk about the air superiority fighters and I'm going to split these into two different brackets. So first I've just selected the role and I've got a smattering of nation decks selected here not for mostly any particular reason other than I know what's in those decks and there's a couple of planes which are only to the Americans and Russians. So first let's talk about short-range dogfighters. These are the slightly older, cheaper jets such as the F-4F and the F-4J Phantom. These are slightly slower, they have a slightly bigger turn radius than the more modern fighters and they tend to only have a short range missile other than the Phantom here which does have a medium range missile. But if we look at the F4F you can see that its turn radius is 400, ECM's 20% and it's got one of these short range sidewinder type missiles and obviously it's cannon. These are good for getting up close and personal to aircraft and they're cheap to bring in so if you lose them it's not the end of the world. Then you can think about the planes that you might see more commonly in games, such as the F-16C Block 52. These are your more modern air superiority fighters. And if we take a look at the stats there, we can see it's got its cannon, it's got its Sidewinder short range missile, and then it's got its ARAM, the long range 7,700 meter missile. This is actually more of a medium range, and the Russians have one that's 8,400. But you can see also that these planes have a higher ECM, a tighter turn radius. And I will just quickly note the turn radius doesn't seem to relate to any distance on the map in game. But just to give an indication of how quickly they're going to turn in a dogfight. And again, its speed is a thousand kilometers per hour. So, you know, these are pretty fast, effective planes. Then we can take a look at the Russian side. They have the Su-27S. Again, very similar aircraft, except it has a medium range missile with the 8,400 meters. Now, I just wanted to click on this unit and point it out. The Finnish deck has this MiG-29, and my Finnish friend assures me they didn't have MiG-29s during the Cold War, so he's a bit confused as to why they have it now. But basically, for its price, it's very good. It's got a very tight turn radius, it's got good ECM, it's got a very good missile and it's got a high speed. And part of me thinks that it should probably cost a little bit more than it does. And I'm seeing people bring in quite a few of these in games recently. And they're doing quite a good job at being air superiority fighters for a very cheap price compared to some of the others. Then there's one other type of interceptor, which we will have a quick look at. Only the Americans and the Russians have these. These are your long range interceptors. One is the American Tomcat, which has a missile range of 12,600 meters. The other side have the MiG-31, with again a missile range of 11,200, and the MiG-31M, which has 12,600. Something you should probably know with the MiG-31M in particular is all it has are these missiles. It does not have a cannon or close range missiles. The MiG-31 has a cannon but no close range missiles. The Tomcat has a full selection of cannons and close range missiles. However, its turn radius is 400 and its ECM is only 30%. While these are very good at long range, you want to keep these at a distance, you do not want to get into a dogfight with them. If you see enemy planes which are dogfighters coming for you, or air superiority fighters, you want to bug these out very quickly. Now, the other units to think about are the attack aircraft. 
There are a variety of ground attack aircraft, such as rockets, ATGMs, HE bombs, cluster bombs, and napalm. So if we have a quick look at some of these, I'm just going to highlight a couple. And if I find the Skyhawk, there we go. So the A4M Skyhawk 2, this is a very cheap aircraft to bring in. It's not particularly fast. It doesn't really have good RCM. It has a good turn radius and it has rockets. Now, rockets, much like rocket artillery, are not very much use at killing vehicles. However, they are very good at stunning vehicles. If you have a tightly packed group of enemy units that you need to stun so your artillery can kill them or so you can move other units into position or to stop an attack, for 60 points, this is quite a good unit to bring in to stun those units. And if it dies, well, it's not the end of the world really, is it? It's 60 points. I could live with that. So there are a variety of these rocket attack jets and they're all pretty cheap. So something to keep in mind. Then you have the more standard ATGM planes. The A-10 Thunderbolt is a classic. This comes equipped with a cannon and also its Maverick missiles. These are very good at taking out single targets. Some of them, like the Thunderbolt, have a little bit of armor, which obviously means they stay alive a bit longer. Equally, the ECM is pretty poor, so they're at risk of being hit by anti-air missiles. But they have their place in the game, and some of them aren't too expensive. Equally, on the Russian side, there are the MiG-27s, which again have these short-range anti-ground missiles. Next, let's take a look at just the bombers on their own, and in particular the HE bombers. So a good example of this, and one of the more expensive ones, is the F-117 Nighthawk. These carry two Paveway 3 missiles, they're guided, and they do a lot of damage to anything they hit. They're pretty good against vehicles and infantry. Equally, the IL-102 has 14 500 kilogram bombs, which will do an immense amount of damage to someone's front line, especially if you come at them from the side rather than the front. And there is also the Yak-38M, which is a fairly cheap aircraft, which has four 500 kilogram bombs, which for its price are going to do quite a lot of damage. Then there are the cluster bomb aircraft, such as the F-111F Aardvark. These are medium in price range and have cluster munitions that usually have AP damage, so are good against vehicles. These are what you would call in to take out an incoming line of clustered vehicles, or perhaps to attack an enemy defensive line. And then on the Russian side, you have the MiG-21 SMT, and the MiG-25 RBT, which also have cluster bombs. The Napalm Bombers. These aren't called in as much as they used to be. I'm quite used to seeing these at the start of every game, bombing a road or a town to stop the enemy putting units there. But I don't see them pulled out very often, and it is a legitimate tactic. Most of the time you would lose the plane in the process, but they're fairly cheap, and if they stop the enemy being able to take over an important town or be able to continue to move down a main road, then perhaps it's worth those 75 points to get your units into position first. But interesting that people don't use that as much these days. And the final aircraft to talk about are the seed aircraft. These are your anti-radar planes. They have missiles which are designed to attack enemy air defenses, which have radar missiles or radar guns. The Tunguska, for example, has a radar cannon rather than radar missiles, whereas the Buck has a radar missile system. These planes don't necessarily need to be aimed at the target, they just need to go in the general vicinity and will automatically lock on and launch a missile. However, the way to avoid that is to turn off your radar anti-air and then turn it on once the plane goes past. So it depends how closely someone is watching their air defenses as to whether you're going to succeed in killing anything. So that's a basic overview of the types of aircraft. Now let's have a look in the game map 
and see how we would use some of these aircraft. This isn't going to be easy to show. Ideally, you'd do this in a real game and see me killing enemy units with the planes, but equally, they're unpredictable, so I can't say that what's going to happen. And if I attempt to pull out this deck in a multiplayer game, people are going to get very annoyed with me. So I'm going to try and do this as simply as possible with no enemy in the game. All I really want to do is show you how to maneuver your aircraft and the best way to bring them in, etc, etc. So first, let's have a think about our close range air superiority fighters. In this case, it's the Su-27S. Here we can see where you bring in aircraft in the map. You have air corridors. Some maps will have multiple air corridors. Your planes will come in from the closest air corridor and they will always come in from that air corridor in the future, I believe is the case. So let's bring in the Su-27S. This has a medium range, a short range missile and a cannon. Now flying this over the front lines of the enemy like this, let's assume that their front lines are Gregory, Chariton and Elena. That's going to get your plane killed. Even if you have a dogfight here, your plane's going to be in a bad position because it's going to get shot at by the enemy and the air defences, assuming they have some, of course. What we can go back to is my offence and defence video, which is, if you're going to attack the enemy, if you can, avoid their defensive line, go around it. Look at this side of the map. This huge area is just forests. The reality is most people aren't going to put a load of air defences in these forests. So rather than take our aircraft over the centre of the map, let's take our aircraft around the map. So let's say the enemy have some fighters or a bomber coming in and your aircraft are stationed in this corner. Firstly, they're probably not going to know that you've got them down there. So they're going to be worrying about what's going on over here and you've secretly got some anti-aircraft planes down here. As soon as they bring in a bomber through their air corridor or their own fighters, you can quickly zip across the map and attack them from this side without having to go through their primary air defense. Fantastic. Equally, they might not have much air defense in their main base. Most people will have it concentrated here. They may have a unit or two in their main base, but that's much more preferable to attack than going into the 10 that are lined up along here. So when you see the enemy bringing in aircraft, you can just attack them as soon as they get in the game. Just be ready to evac, which is either the evac button down here or V on the keyboard. A good tactic for interceptors and long range interceptors like the MiG-31 is to put them on a hotkey, much like you would artillery. So if I control two, the MiG-31, and then select a different plane, then I hit the number two, I immediately select the MiG-31 again. This is handy because there'll be situations where you're doing something else, you're messing with your ground unit, and then the enemy bring in an aircraft, a bomber, a plane, and you want to engage that. Well, this is the quick way to do it. You hit two, you right click on that plane, then you zoom out quickly to see what your MiG-31 is doing, because your MiG-31 has missiles with a range of over 12,000 meters. Your MiG-31 should not be getting to this part of the map, certainly not near any enemy air defenses. That MiG-31 is probably dead if it got that far. The reality is you want to call it in, get it just behind your front line, and hopefully have launched its missiles by that point, and then evac. Oh, and planes always evac towards their point of origin. Their long range missiles, they may or may not hit their target. If they do, great, you've killed something. If they don't, it's no big loss. But you do not want to lose these planes, they are really expensive. So evac them. If they're getting close to the middle, evac them. You're better off getting them out of there because if they're getting into close quarters combat with an air superiority fighter like the Su-27S, they're gonna die. And if they go over the main battery of anti-air defenses, they're going to die. You have a bit more freedom with the Su-27 because if you look at its stats, it has good ECM, its turn radius is tight and it's pretty fast. So it might survive missiles getting fired at it a little bit more because it's going to dodge them. The reality is you still don't really want to send it over the main air defense area of the map. You want to go around the sides if you can. And also I've got one of them here. 
The reality is you probably want a couple of these when you're engaging the enemy. A, to make sure that you kill whatever you're going after, and B, if they do bring out their own air superiority fighters, you're going to want to outnumber them or at least match them to stand a chance. If you've got one SU-27S versus four F-16s, you've already lost that fight and you're going to lose your plane. And again, these aren't cheap items to lose. So let's evac him and let's have a look at something else. Let's have a look at the MiG-25 BM. This is the SEED aircraft with a 5,250 meter range on its missile. It has no other weapons. I'm going to bring this in towards the middle of the map because that's where their air defenses are going to be. Now watch where this plane goes. I've targeted it behind Dimitri as its come in point and it's going to veer one way or the other and then circle. Realistically, you don't want a seed aircraft to circle. What happens is, if you've got a good opponent, they're going to have turned off their radar anti-air system. And then, when you fly towards their radar anti-air, it's going to be off. So here we are, I'm flying towards Charriton, where they have some radar anti-air, let's say. I can't see it, I'm not firing at it, I'm not automatically firing my missiles, so I veer off. As soon as I veer off, they've turned those missiles back on and my plane just got blown out of the sky, or at the very least is damaged. The reality is, once your aircraft get close to their front line, if they haven't locked on to anything, evac them. So here we are, I'm going past Fedor, I'm getting close to Elena where they should have some anti-air, nothing there, evac. I don't want to go over the air defences. And I don't really want to do a flyby and then go back because they're going to shoot at me as I fly by. Because that's what I would do if I saw an enemy plane incoming. I would turn off my air defences and as soon as it gets in range and it's turned itself slightly, I would open fire and probably kill it. And a very interesting player in a game I played recently was doing that to me. But he had a backup plan. We were losing the game, we didn't have many aircraft, we didn't have many air defences. I was basically holding one side of the map myself with two air defence units. He realised this, was bringing in a seed plane to try and kill them. I had them turned off, as his seed plane turned, I would turn them on. Killing the seed plane, which gives me a lot of points, fair enough. He would then immediately, as the seed plane turned and he saw that fire, have a Nighthawk ready waiting behind their lines to take out my anti-aircraft and there was nothing I could do about it because I can't move those units in time and because I only had two of them they weren't going to kill the Nighthawk because the Nighthawk killed one of them. So something to bear in mind is you need a good amount of air defense to stop attacks like that and seed aircraft make good bait I suppose is the other thing. Equally you could use a cheap aircraft like the Yak-38 to get them to turn on their anti-air Though some players wouldn't bother turning on their radar anti-air for a Yak-38 because it's probably not worth it. But while we've got the Yak-38 out, let's have a look at it doing a bombing run on the forest in Chariton. So this is something you need to practice and look at with aircraft and every aircraft is different in terms of the bombing pattern. The reality is most aircraft bomb in a straight line. So let's have a look. There go the bombs, they're napalm bombs, and they're kind of going in a straight line away from where the plane dropped them. They spread out a bit because it's napalm and fire spread, but you, you get the general idea. Now, let's bring in a cluster plane. There we go. The MiG 25 RBT is cluster bombs. I'm going to call it in. I'm going to fire right here in Boris. My plane's probably going to fly past. Is it going to drop? No. No, it did. Okay. So, again, I just want to show you right now the pattern of bombing. So, in general, it's a pretty straight line that way. There's a little bit of veering off to one side or the other, but it tends to go pretty straight. And then we'll do the same with the IL-2. I'll bring it in and I'll bomb the back of Boris. Now... 
the IL-102 does seem to have a slightly different bombing pattern to most planes. And we'll have a look at that now, hopefully. It seems to be in more of a triangle from my experiments. Side note is if your bomber ever doesn't drop its payload for any reason, evac it immediately. Don't let it try to turn around and come back. Probably more a straight line as the other ones were. It seems a bit more sporadic with the IL-102 then because I got a perfect triangle before and this time I'm sort of getting a bit of a smattering in different angles. What I want to do now is bring in the Yak-38 and this time I want to come at somewhere from the side. So let's imagine this is a defensive line. The enemy have a load of units in a line across there. If we attack it from the front, we're going to make a line through it and damage some units here. So we're going to attack there and there drop our bombs, our napalm, whatever else. And we're going to do some damage here. Ideally, what you want to do is come at this from the side. So you're taking out more units, you're spreading your bombs further in their normal pattern. So what I will do is I will have our unit now fire here. And we will drop our napalm bombs this way. Which means that we should cover more of their front line and therefore catch more of their units. What you need to be aware of here is, if you haven't already cleared their anti-air, they're going to kill your plane. You need to be using artillery, you need to be using seed aircraft to take out their anti-air before you do a bombing run like this. Simple as that. Let's just snap quickly ahead to seeing the cluster bomber drop its bombs. And as you can see, it's got that lovely straight line covering a lot more units than if you just went directly at the defensive line. And this applies to most bombers. So if you can get away with it, this is the way to bomb an enemy defensive position. However, it puts your planes at increased risk because they have to be on the map longer. That's not just the threat of the anti-air on the ground, but also other planes. So there's two planes I haven't shown you in this video, and that would be the ATGM plane, and that's because there's no enemies to shoot at, and they're extremely situational. It's very risky to bring them in in most situations um, because they will die towards the enemy tank. So they then have to pull back up after they've dropped their payload. So they themselves are always going to be at risk of enemy anti-aircraft fire. And they also have to get very close to the enemy lines. They're perhaps better for taking out an advancing enemy tank. So if the enemy is pushing you with a very expensive T-80, then you could bring that in and kill it before it's really made any headway. The other plane that I haven't shown in this part of the video are the rocket pod planes. Again, they're very situational. They're good for stunning enemy columns. They will kill infantry that are tightly clustered, but I would rarely bring them in. They are lovely and cheap, but I don't have any in any of my decks. Right, I'm going to stop the video there because I've talked for long enough. Hopefully that's a good basic overview and it helps with some tactics you can use in the game. Obviously, there are a lot more advanced tactics that you can do with aircraft because of how versatile they are with all the different weapon systems. So that's something you can explore yourself. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Please like, share and subscribe. Comments below. Again, I really hope this was helpful. Have a fantastic week.